So now this building we're looking at here obviously is a smokehouse. Yeah. And, and you have two very strong architectural elements that show you that. Whenever you're passing through Grand Manan, you'll see the sliding doors mm -hmm. and that chimney vented roof yeah. hmm? at the top of it. Yeah. So whenever you go around Grand Manan, you'll be confused sometimes because you'll see the sliding doors, but you won't see the vented roof because the buildings have been converted and no, no longer used as smoke sheds. So people knock the tip off and close the roofs off. This is one of the few remaining on the island that's actually in the in, in good shape and will remain in good shape for quite a long time. Sure. Because on a day like today, if we're smoking on a day like today, which is nice and dry out, mm -hmm. we'd leave those windows wide open because the sun and the dry air is helping us dry the fish. Mm -hmm. If it's a moist day or a foggy day, which often happens here, we want to close those doors mm -hmm. right up. Mm -hmm. This whole building is designed around this stick, right? This stick's 39 inches long. And it really dictates the design of the building. You see the way the sticks are hanging in the bays? Yeah. That, uh, depending on how many bays you have, it's really this that the architect works with. Once you give him this, then he knows what the, what the rest has to be. But this particular section here that has no nets on it, no netting on it, this is this is this is what this is an older ware. So this ware is coming from the times of the first peoples here, or the native native oh, okay. native peoples here, huh? When the settlers first came from Europe, uh, they found these wares here already in existence. People were already fishing it like this for hundreds of years. Okay. Now the only thing that this is not showing, the bottom parts of this would still have the, the branches of the trees on it. And it's those branches that would sort of hold in the fish. And they would empty them pretty much at night before because daylight the fish could see through them a little easier and, and get out. Although Nowadays in wares, you're only seeing people fish for herring, even though other fish go in there. So this is the native trap, and it, it's, it's, it's hundreds of years older than the, what, we, what is used today. Now here we have the fence, right? And you always see those on the wares, and it almost comes close to the shore. Some places it comes just about onto the rocks of the shore. Let's say the fish are swimming, they're in their current, and they see the fence, and then they turn. Huh? They, get going, they go into the open door of the ware. Now they're inside. As soon as the fish sort of sense that confinement, they want to escape. Okay. So what they do, what the fish does, the, sm the small fish, is when it senses that, that something's, something's up, something's not right, it dies. And it starts to go for deeper water. Okay. Deeper water enhances its chances for survival against predators. And you know why, right? Because the volume of water is just so much greater. Okay. So... Once it's in there, now we're getting to what the, the part of the story that you were talking about. Once it's in there and it can't get its way out, it can't find its way out, then look at the shape of the wear. If, move, if you run along the outside of the wear, it's exactly what you were saying, huh? Mm -hmm. That figure eight motion, there it goes, right? So that's what the fish sort of are doing. And they don't try to necessarily escape out the door that they came in because that's the shallowest part of the wear. So the instinct of the fish is to stay deep. So it's not looking to come towards the surface, run out of water, so to speak, have less water to be in, to try to get to try to get out the way they came in. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the other fish is sometimes, if you've been looking at where sometimes you see seals in there, or goodness, you, there's all kinds of other fish that go in there. Sometimes they'll even have giant bluefin tunas, uh, which they have to give, let free, because they're not allowed to keep them or hunt them here and slaughter them. Last year, I was out on a wear at Bradford Cove, and there was a big mako shark in there. Oh, wow. Wow. You know, so they had to clear that mako shark out because part of the process involves a scuba diver. He's the one that bumped into the mako down below, and he wasn't even frightened. I would have jumped right out, of, <laughs> right out of the water. I think I would have been on the boat and said, "Let's go home. That's the end of this career." <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he got right back in the water with it, and. Uh, all right, now we're going to talk. So the fish are in. We have we have them in there. Let's imagine we have a bunch of fish in there. Okay, we have some choices we can make. 
we can close the gate, right? That would be one choice and, and start to get that purse sanding set up to, to pick the fish up. We have another choice to make. And that is what recently I did with my, my neighbor. We're gonna take, we're gonna take what they call sweeping. So we're gonna sweep the fish here with a net all the way to this section. We're gonna keep that seine here. Connect, it, connect part of it from here, one end here to the part of it here. We still have plenty left. We're gonna circle the rest of this where. We're gonna call this now the pound, okay? But once we have it from here to here, the door's still open. So while we have our fish trapped here, we can still be fishing the where on this section, all right? So while we're collecting our fish here to go to market, we're already getting new guys coming in here. Sure. Oh, that's cool. Right, it's pretty cool, right? So now, we're, we're across here and we take a look. This is some of the advantages of where I'm sort of very interested in the square stuff because let's say the giant bluefin tuna go in there. They're alive, right? We're not allowed to catch them. We let them back out. We get them back out. We push them out somehow. If, if the whale goes in there, we have to do, we sometimes even have to break the parts of the whale open to let them get them, figure a way to get them back out. So we're not depleting, we're not wasting the resource. And that's what I meant, if we could employ this a little bit more in the future of fishing and other kinds of techniques, this is a great thing to do. Now, also, it gives you the highest quality fish that you can imagine. Because let's say, let's say we have those fish in there and somebody says at the Connors over here in Blacks Harbor, we want some sardines. What do you got in there? What, what kind of fish you got in there? And we say, well, six eights, meaning when they go in a, into a can, they would look like six fish to, up to eight fish in a, in, a, in a sardine can, which is a nice size. You know, it's a pretty good quality size for sardines. So they said, okay, great, we'll, we'll, we want those. Bring those, bring, those, bring those fish over, bring those herring over. So you yeah, well, how, what does it might say, well, how do the herring look? You say, well, they're full of feed, meaning they just ate and their bellies are all exploded and they have half digested food in their bellies. Now, do we want to have to work with little fingers trying to clean those fish? Or would we rather leave those fish there and plus, we're going to squish them on top of each other. Their bellies are going to explode from all of them. And it's going to be pretty nasty and messy and a gooey, kind of gooky, half-digested. You know, you get a couple of tons of half-digested, you know, stomach contents. You'd rather not. If you can avoid it, you'd rather not, right? All right, so we can avoid it. We're, we, 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 we're we fishermen. We can avoid it. We let those fish sit there in the pen for a day. They're going to excrete that, right? They're going to empty the contents. And now when, now when everybody's belly, all well, of these fish's bellies are, are down to nothing, really cleaned out, then we'll harvest them. Then we'll send them over to the uh, sardine factory. Pretty smart, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, so now we, we said we have a lot of fish. Now we want to get them out of there. This, back to your question here. So now we have this, what we're going to do with the bottom of this net. Is think of this as a, a curtain. And think of it as a shower curtain. Right? The way a shower curtain hangs on hooks. Now, but now we're going to take it and with that shower curtain, we're going to flip it upside down. So the hooks are on the bottom. And so the hooks are on the bottom of this. And then we're going to go from pole to pole to pole. And we're going to tie a new section of that curtain all around. That's where the scuba diver comes in. He goes down below and goes right through the rings. Okay, he goes right through those, those rings with his, with his line. And now we're getting to what you were talking about. If we pulled on that. Uh, we'll pull it all together. Right? Pulls it all together. And now you have a bottom. Uh -huh. You have a closed bottom net. Now, if you're able to take that and bring it on board the back of the boat over the boom and start to slowly raise that, you're lifting the bottom of the net up. Okay? 